By the early 1800s, American society clearly has evolved to see a period of the beginnings of innovations, speculation, and the emergence of the middling class. Americans began to define themselves as a separate culture, breaking from the European style and customs. Americans adopted the frontiersman spirit, creating a new society unlike anything found in Europe. This American spirit became, became visible once westward expansion fervor erupted. As we know, the nation had been expanding throughout the Northwest Ordinance, the Louisiana Purchase, the adams onis Treaty, the National Road, the Indian Removal Act, and eventually land will be promised to soldiers. The causes of this migration fervor lives with the American spirit of adventure. The strength of the federal government clearly noted in the myriad of land acquisition treaties and purchases, the increased prices of wheat and corn pulling farmers to the Midwest where the two can grow well and the invention of the cotton gin. Cotton, as we know, is fickle. It must grow in specific locations and under specific conditions. Alabama and Mississippi will offer such conditions. It will be under these instances that American society will be given the opportunity to grow. Even though we discussed the Panic of 1819 before, it's worth mentioning again. Let's look at the causes and effects of the Panic. To begin, the causes include land speculation. Through Henry Clay's American system, the North and West were able to build roads and canals. The effects were important. The urban population grew and an obvious shift occurred from agriculture to industry. The life of the farmer was, no, was too risky after the Panic of 1819. Hubs developed along waterways, Syracuse would be an example along the Erie Canal. And as before, land speculation will also continue. As roads are built, people can move further and further west. Land speculators could continue to buy up land and sell it for a profit. It's a matter of timing, obviously. Sometimes this yields great profits, sometimes it does not. The emergence of industrialization in the early 1800s had its beginnings due to first the Embargo Act of 1807. The Embargo Act stopped trade with Britain and France. It forced the northern industries to trade with Canada throughout the War of 1812, thus building their industries. Although the Embargo Act devastated the American economy, it also forced the North to find ways to continue their livelihood. Tariffs through the American system also protected American goods, creating a need and jobs. With these jobs, the increase in immigration allowed manufacturing to be fulfilled. The time period also brought innovation. One such example would be interchangeable parts. No longer are items custom made. Farm equipment, household items, and guns can be made quickly and easily fixed. The effects of industrialization also changed the American social landscape. Women and children entered the workforce. Development of industrial centers led to working class neighborhoods and pollution. And with the advent of interchangeable parts, artisans began to lose their standing within the economic community. A gap began to form between the wealthy and poor. Poor farmers were dependent on weather and foreign and domestic markets. Any pitfall could destroy their personal finances. Oftentimes, a plan B did not exist. In the cities, the poor families relied on child labor to aid the family's income and many lived in areas prone to disease, crime, and poor or non-existent education. The disillusionment of rags to riches was apparent. The wealthy farmers typically owned 75% of the nation's land, and by 1848 in the cities, the top 20% owned 96% of the country's wealth. The gap was obvious. The issues associated with the gap include pauperism and the cyclical nature of poverty. With the influx of Irish immigrants and an increased birth rate, not enough property was available. Racism and discrimination will also be witnessed throughout American society, most notably in the cities where rival gangs will form and crime will run rampant. Okay, now for your essential question. 
Research who made up the middling or middle class during the antebellum period in American society and create a list of characteristics. 